Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Silver Track Extra, where we give you tools, tips, and tricks to improve your guard management, retain more customers, win more contracts, and gain the upper hand against your competitors. Here are your hosts, Chris Anderson and Johnny Page. What's up, Silver Track Nation? Johnny Page and Chris Anderson here on episode number 71 of the Silver Track Extra. Well, we're going to take a little minute and reflect on five things that we learned from ASIS 2015 and from Cal Saga 2015. So this was the first time in a long time that we've been to either of these shows as a company. And Chris, it was it was a pretty eye opening and exciting experience, to say the least. Yeah, ASIS was that was unbelievable. I've never been to anything so big. I don't think we even covered uh, half the show. You know, yeah, it was large. it was overwhelming at first. You you go and set up, and it was like a madhouse in there. And then by the first morning of the show, it looked normal, right? <laughs> right, and uh, yeah. it was quite the production. That, yeah, it was hard to believe they had that carpet set up like they did. Remember that? I mean, I think those guys, all of the what, what are they union workers there? Yeah, probably mm-hmm. so, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty incredible. And then Calsaga was an awesome experience. Definitely a lot different. So I think ASIS. I think the number that I heard there was around twenty thousand attendees. Um, Calsaga a lot different. Maybe about a hundred, hundred and fifty. Um, and the demographic was a lot different in that we had a lot of customers already at Calsaga, um, and then a lot of people sign up there at the show too. So it was it was a pretty cool dynamic. But let's waste no time. Let's jump straight into it. The first thing that I think we walk away with, Chris, you and I agreed, was that the industry is changing and buzzing now more than ever. Uh, It was incredible the amount of new things that were there, the amount of buzz and change around the industry, tons of educational opportunities to really get to know uh, how your business is going to be impacted. It was a pretty uh, incredible experience just to understand the scope of uh, the security industry all coming together at one place in Anaheim. Yeah, you know, security itself is just, it's, it's really turning into technology. Isn't it amazing? Versus bodies. I think I saw more applications, more software, whether it's a camera or a reporting system. It's just, it just mind-blowing. It really is. Yeah, there was something for everything there. I mean, we saw cool little gadgets from where if an officer left their keys, they're a little... Uh, pack on their belt would rumble anytime yeah, like he's got one. three ways. I, yeah. That was that was pretty cool. That was pretty what, cool. How did that work again? What was it? A little battery pack, right? What was it? It was like uh, yeah. Let's see if I can pull up the company's name. But it was like a, yeah. it was basically something you looped onto your belt, and if you got more than. I think it was like three feet or three yards away. Oh, it was Tether Technologies. We met John. Uh, who was the CEO there, John Surian. I don't know how you say his last name, but um, from Tether Tech uh, Inc. And basically they have a tool that it's a little attachment to the belt. The keys go on a key ring where if the officer leaves them behind less than or more than three yards away, the belt loop starts to rumble and the keys start to rumble. Uh, So you're guaranteed that the officers are not going to lose (laughs) the keys. Uh, So that That was was pretty cool. All the way up to what there were like uh, those giant barriers that would block a um, like a semi truck from wrecking into a building. So there was all some crazy demos just a couple of feet away from us. Um, but yeah, overall, and, and then software for everything. Uh, but it, all in all, basically technology and improved communication really allowing the security industry to innovate much faster, um, to really learn from each other's successes. And you're just really seeing the industry push forward. It's definitely not like your grandpa's security industry, right? Yeah, it was <laughs> definitely, definitely, de- definitely changed. It's almost scary to a point. Just think of it. We lost connectivity. I mean, what would we do without, you know, we're getting, so, are getting ourselves to a point now. I mean, what would we do without it? Yeah. Right. It's amazing. Yeah. You know? cr- crazy. I don't know what we'd do. We, we'd probably, yeah. you and I would probably sit around and twirl our thumbs <laughs> or yeah, go I insane. What to do. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The the second thing that we learned is there are some really incredible tools and resources out there. If you're a security company owner or an operations manager, there is no reason that you have to operate 
um, under the old premise of a security business where you're chasing down uh, paper reports, where you're uh, going through headaches of managing payroll and all of the uh, the process that goes into hiring companies. I mean, there are just some incredible tools and resources, educational resources, free resources out there that can really allow you to operate your company at a much higher level than I think has ever been possible before. Like what one human can possibly accomplish now is is incredible, even more than what it was 10 years ago. Yeah, I mean, you don't even have to look at application anymore. Look at that. You got Bob from Quantech. You can go online, submit your application, review. You got your paperless proposal systems. You got your real time reporting. I mean, <laughs> what what else is there left? You know? You can yeah, just it was do everything electronically now. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. I think the third one here, and this is maybe just a little bit. Uh, uh, I don't know. Obviously, we're a little bit biased, but we really learned that we have an amazing product um, with in an area where, especially at ASIS um, and even at CalSaga. So you're, we're at ASIS, and there are hundreds of vendors there, and about ten competitors for us of, of people that are in the same space as us that do the same type of software or something similar, and we're able to walk away with 18 new companies as a result of these conferences. And that is just alone, like the people that come to the booth, pull out a credit card and sign up right there. It says a lot that in in such a competitive area, we're having customers come up and, and, and tell us, hey, oh my gosh, I love your software. It's done so much for my business. And then to see the reaction of people who aren't using SilverTrack standing there a couple of feet away and then pulling out their credit card and signing up. It was really cool just to be reassured that what you and I dedicate our, ourselves to and the rest of the team at SilverTrack dedicate ourselves to every day. It, it really does mean something. It's doing something. It is. Uh, it really is valuable to a lot of companies out there. And then, of course, exciting to welcome on the 18 new um, that are just now starting the journey with SilverTrack. No, it was terrific. And I got to tell you, and everybody is listening, you know, thank you so much, you guys, for I think the biggest compliment we got, John, is just having people come up and say, listen, we listen to your podcast. We really get a lot out of it. And, you know, that's because we come from the industry. We've been, you know, I've been doing this myself for 20, 25 years now. Software was 14 years ago. So we've come a long way. We were, you know, we were the leaders in the industry. We understand what everybody's paying, I think. And we made the software simple, right? So, you know, it's a, it's a family based business with us and yeah. with our customers. Really cool. Another thing, we, we traditionally we've been very geared towards a contract security company. It was really fascinating to see how, uh, what a great fit this is for a lot of in house security teams, for very large in house security teams, uh, all the way down to small ones. I mean, we're talking with um, in house teams at universities now, in colleges, or at medical facilities, or at manufacturing plants, and the number of companies that are. Uh, you know, we've we have we've had several and a handful that you have used it in the past as an in-house team, but now, it, it, especially after going to these two conferences, it certainly seems like um, it will be used more and more for that going forward because it was such a great fit, and they're seeing some early success with those. So that was pretty cool too. I don't think we expected that, um, you, you know, I, I, you know, but it's also all, uh, always a nice surprise. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we had what Japan, Finland, New Zealand. Brazil, we had Nigeria, we had everybody come to our booth. I mean, that was absolutely amazing to talk to somebody from Nigeria that owned a security company over there. And they were quite large, right? Like yeah. Seven, what, how big was their employee base? Yeah, 17,000 officers in Nigeria. They're, they're using the product now, which is it's very cool. It's complete learning experience um, on my end, uh, being the account manager for that one and kind of heading up the deployment of the software for them very different um, than anywhere else, the, the issues that they face um, and, and a complete learning experience. But yeah, pretty incredible to have, you know, the the owner of a company of 17,000 officers walk up and he turns to you. So I was doing the demo. It was a cool story, actually. I was doing the demo with him and you kind of walk up and I say, oh, actually, this is the owner, founder of the company. Um, and he turns to you and says, this is brilliant. 
right? Like right there in the booth. And then they step aside, talk amongst themselves, come back and sign right up there in the booth. It was incredible to, for, you know, because you know they're making the tour around. They said they made the trip over here to find a software exactly like ours. They do the tour. They look around at all all the different options, 10 plus competitors, and they end up signing up with Silvertrack. So pretty cool to, to see that happen. Uh, I think fourth thing that we learned is that we really love meeting our customers face to face. And I know in the past you've had op- uh, opportunities to meet several of our customers, um, but it was very cool. I think we met over 70 of our customers, 70 companies, so more than just 70 people, but 70 companies. Uh, we got to meet face to face, shake hands, and just have a conversation about how the software is working, how their business is growing, what what they're struggling, what they're facing, what they're looking to get out of the conference. Um, just really cool to meet people who you work with digitally all the time. Uh, no matter how frequently we speak, there's nothing can really replace just meeting someone face to face. So that was really cool. Well, Silver Track Nation, let's take a break and hear from our sponsors over at Paperless Proposal. We've all been there before. You put countless hours into a proposal, painstakingly nitpicked every last detail until you finally finish and click send. Then you spend the next several days thinking, did they get it? Did they like it? Have they even read it yet? Well, with Paperless Proposal, those worries are gone. Not only can you actually see when your prospect views your proposal, but you can see what pages they look at, how long they look at them, and who they forward the proposal to. All of these analytics help you gain valuable insight into how your prospective clients view and interact with your proposals, giving your sales team important data to close more contracts. So what are you waiting for? Head over to paperlessproposal.com slash silvertrack to get a free demo and take advantage of a special offer just for our listeners. Now, let's get back to our featured conversation. Yeah, I love, actually, you know, I really like the the ASIS show, but I really enjoyed the Kelsog show, the personal. I mean, look at, uh, for an example, Dave from Intercept. I've talked to that guy off and on for probably seven months and then it was funny he's walking down the hallway and dave's big football looking guy right yeah right <laughs> like, like you can't miss card. him i did you can't miss him i mean the guy is just like he's huge he's, he's you know he's he's massive i hate to get in a fight with this guy and he's walking down the hallway and i go hey your football coach is going to be pissed that you missed the game right and he starts <laughs> laughing and he goes chris it's me dave and i go dave 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 you're Dave Holman, right? Soft, well-spoken guy, you know, just like a big teddy bear. But here's this guy. It's just, you know, unbelievable. So it's really cool, you know, to, to meet people. It really is face-to-face. You talk to him over the phone, and you got this image, and then you see him. It's just mind-blowing. It really is. I really enjoy that. Yeah, uh, it was really cool, too. Uh, one thing I liked more about Cal Saga, of course, I like them both for different reasons, but um, Cal Saga was nice because you got to have more genuine longer conversations where ASIS it is just like a madhouse from the start to the finish just the booth packed with people the entire time your head's kind of reeling to spend more than 10 or 15 minutes with someone we're at Calsago we got to have several longer conversations with people to really dive in and understand how their business is working and and what their challenges are and it was just it was cool to sit down and get to spend more time uh, and just to learn more and even connect outside of the business world it was a nice couple of days to just learn more about the person behind the business too yeah, I like it too. Even though it was a big show, it wasn't too bad. Because, but because it was such a large show, you know, a lot of people are doing everything they possibly can just to get through. <laughs> I mean, everything that was there, and they don't yeah. have the entire week. Some people only had two days, so you, you almost felt guilty. You didn't want to stop anybody coming by. But what I really liked about it, and did you notice it that the majority of people, if they registered, they just walked right in your booth, and that yeah. was nice. I didn't. You'd have to feel like you needed somebody to flag him down and put a pretty girl up there with a, with a with a candy jar to grab anybody. It was you know they were interested. They came in and yeah, I, I liked. That and they part. had to be really interested because we are definitely not that pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. exactly. We're definitely <laughs> so not you that knew pretty. they wanted to know yeah. about what we were what we were doing because there was nothing else there to attract them to the booth, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, that's I'll, for sure. Man. I'll, I'll tell that's, you what. One thing. Well, hey, is, you're the younger guy. Come on, you're 25. You're you Mr. Fitness in shape. You're a good looking kid. I mean, so you could throw it all on me. They probably looked at the sign and said, "Boy, is this a bus for re- tra- transporting the retarded or what?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but then you think you walk past the Samsung booth, and I'm pretty sure it looked more like a Hooters over there than it did a Samsung oh, yeah. booth. At least that was the word on the block. I mean, it was pretty incredible uh, the the lengths that some of these companies were going to to get people in the booth. But, hey, you do what you have to do with 20,000 people hey, there. That's you know? why Hooters, that's why it's not their chicken wings, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, right. So I'll tell you, the last thing, and this maybe is more for me than for you because you've been through it all but i it was very cool the fifth thing that we learned was that owners and operators are incredible what they face on a day-to-day basis having to manage everything from scheduling and payroll and hiring and managing guards and managing supervisors and pulling together proposals and marketing and customer relationships the security side of things it was just incredible when you get to meet someone face to face and have a longer conversation with them you realize that they that they They've got a lot going on, right? It, it, you can't just pull this off. Anytime you get up to where you're managing over 100, 300, 500, 800 officers, you're not doing that by mistake, right? There's a lot of thought that goes into it, a ton of hard work, and it was just cool to sit across. One of our customers who I'd worked with numerous times but never met in person, you got to sit down during one of the receptions at Cal Saga and have a conversation. At one point in the conversation, hearing everything that he had going on, I just said, man, you are incredible to be accomplishing all this. The size of the company that you have, the way you're operating, it was just pretty cool. Uh, And it gave me a new appreciation for what all of you guys do out in the field on a a day-to-day basis. Yeah, the bottom the bottom line is that we're all the same, right? A lot of guys get this this industry can depress you, right? You feel like, man, am I am I the only one that's struggling like this? So it's nice to come to an event like that, talk with other people, share the experience and notice, you know, and and, and understand that everybody's in the same boat you are. So it's okay to share, you know. It's it with and that's what I like about Cal Saga. They really work as a partner there with their teams and everybody, you know, everybody's more open to talk about their business and, you know, they realize it's a big world. So I like that. I I, I did enjoy about that part about Calsaga. I, I like that relationship. Yeah. You know, I, their cl- clients, you know. I was like a little bit skeptical before we went because I'm thinking, man, it's a little bit unique to you're gathering with all of your competitors. I mean, there's several companies there who we'd be having a conversation with guys who are direct competitors. They offer the same services in the same location, but they're all sharing like what it's taking to be to push the industry to a new level to help improve their companies, all understanding that there's plenty of work out there for everyone. That's right. That's right. You know, I invited some of our competitors to come over and talk to us to say, hey, you guys don't don't walk by with your head down. Right? You don't need to feel like you got to spy on anything. Come on over. Talk to us. We're friendly. You want to see what we're doing? We'll show you. It's a big world. You have a unique product. We have a unique product. You know, no need for us to, to beat each other up. Let's just... Uh, Let's uh, let's just try to be respectful and, and and do what we can to help the industry, and that's where it's all kind of come about. Customer service, support, and all that, you know. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's the way to do it. I feel. It's yeah, maybe business, that man. that was probably uh, five and a half things we learned. It was cool. A lot of our competitors reached out, and we reached out to them, and it was a, a very friendly conversation. All knowing that. We all have the same headaches, right? In trying to grow our own businesses. And so finding some common ground on that and that was in that regard was cool as well. Yeah, really was. Cool. Well, you know, Chris, I think last we should wrap this up. If you're not a part of an association like Cal Saga, if you're in California or assist in your if you're in Texas and, and I'm not sure what the other associations are um, in the other states. But if you're not part of an association like that and you're in the security industry, I highly recommend that you dive in, figure out where people in your industry are gathering uh, and, and take a take some time away two or three days to just uh get away from your business have some time to work on your business and to connect with colleagues um that are going after the same goals that you are i think that would be super beneficial yeah we should give a big shout out to alita and especially uh david david did a good job as a president of kel saga he's coming in and and i think the the groups the way they did the presentation and their gala event was 
really, really nice. I yeah. Think they really, I think they've really stepped it up this year, so I'm pretty proud of them. And, uh, and you know, we got to give that shout out to Alita. We love her, right, Johnny? Yeah. Got to give Alita the shout. No, so was... Alita, if you're listening, if you're listening, Alita. We love you. You know it. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. Well, guys, if you want to see the show notes and a list of everything that we discussed here, we mentioned a lot of different companies, a lot of different products. Go to silvertracksoftware.com slash 71 for episode number 71. You'll see all the show notes there. And we have a brand new resource center where you can find all of our eBooks, all of our past webinars. We've got calculators in there, the whole bit tools to really help you improve your business so go check that out at silvertracksoftware.com as well and until next time my name is johnny page i'm chris anderson this was the silver track extra and we'll talk to you soon mm-hmm.